Welcome to Noble Moments. This month we're going to be covering a series dealing with scleroderma. It's not an immune disease and we'll go into more detail about it. You'll be seeing our faces quite a bit. This is a very personal matter for us, so sit back, learn something, and enjoy the ride. Welcome back as you guys continue watching the short series we're doing about scleroderma, the definitions, disease, and what, it, what all it affects. So this one we're going to discuss the most common symptoms you're going to come across and it remember it is all generalized. Yep, it's all generalized. Um, he might pop off with some of the ones that I may have but you may not or you may have and not know it. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, most of the common symptoms is hardening and or thickening of the skin. It doesn't have to be both but you can have one or the other or you can have both actually quite painful um it looks like sh it's it's very shiny and it's very smooth um so imagine your skin getting pulled tight with like for any of those people that know anything about makeup liquid highlighter just drenched all over it because it looks so smooth and so shiny um or for those men out there that are watching it's like spit polishing your car it's like when you sit there and you get a nice good buff job on your car or those of you who are veterans who are watching this if you were old school veterans and remember the days of having to shine your boots when your drill sergeants or DIs told you they better see themselves in it. Yeah, uh, some people can have shinier skin to where you can kind of see the reflections of things in it and it's it's pretty painful. Um, a very common one and this one is she deals with on a regular. I suffer from it. I've suffered from it <coughs> since I was uh, allergies. 15. So it's heartburn. Um, We've gone round and round with dealing with episodes of heartburn because of this to, to the point her doctor put her on a daily dose prescription medication for it. Um, all you all, what you always want to do is start by eliminating different foods that give you heartburn and gas. So the symptoms can be amplified compared to a normal person's due to the connective tissue being affected, which means all the connective tissue in your digestive tract, your esophagus, your stomach, all that can cause it to get worse. The most commonly affected with connective tissues problems like what we've got is our esophagus, especially going into the stomach. Um, right in that area, we can wear through that little valve that's down there that opens and closes because of the gases in the heartburn that's coming up because of certain foods that can get worn down to where it either sticks open or it gets eaten away which is why we constantly have to have our esophagus looked at throughout the years of this disease and another thing with the esophagus is it can cause issues with swallowing or what seems like a shrunken esophagus where it's yep. a lot tighter it's harder to swallow even small things it's the collagen inside of our our organs that are starting to tighten up. And so with that, they recommend to try to stay away from spicy foods, fatty foods. They definitely, for those of you who drink a lot of soda or different caffeinated beverages. Caffeinated beverage, I'm sorry, I can't give it up. They say stay away from caffeinated and carbonated beverages. Um, they also recommend excluding acidic foods like juices, uh, believe it or not, cabbage garlic which if you're anything like me you really like using garlic I, I love garlic onions and broccoli which not a fan of broccoli I mean I'm sorry there are many like trees. trees why am I gonna eat a mini tree <laughs> they also recommend staying away from alcohol <clears throat> they do say that over-the-counter antacids uh, we're not gonna name the brands because course we're not going to get into that issue right there, there's but plenty of brands out there any of your over-the-counter antacids they can help reduce some of the symptoms of the heartburn however they do advise a prescription medication that way you can still use the over-the-counter when you're having a little bit more of a flare-up compared to on the medication most common for people with heartburn problems it's chocolate and fatty foods and too much acid. Uh, coffee can be one of the things that if you're a coffee lover, you're gonna have to quit because it can it can cause some damage to your esophagus because of how acidic it is. Death before no coffee. I'm allergic to coffee, which is something that is actually not very common, so I don't have to worry about it. So another symptom, I know you, if you've watched any of our previous videos, you probably heard her mention about the Renaud's syndrome. Yep. 
So that is where, in a nutshell, it causes your blood vessels to constrict, yep. which causes a reduced blood flow to your fingers, your toes, your feet, your arms, believe it or not, even your nose. The tip of your nose and the tops of your ears. And that's one where if you ever notice part of your hand or your whole hand, it can be 90 degrees, 100 degrees outside, it doesn't yep. matter. It just goes bluish white to even purples and they are ice cold. Like as of right now, I'm trying to warm up my right hand because these four fingers are starting to get cold and it's pretty toasty out here. It's actually comfortable for me, but it's pretty, pretty warm and they're starting to go cold. And once the flare up starts to subside, there's usually a lot of pain involved because your body's, all those nerves that were starving for oxygen and blood are now firing even more now that the heat's coming back. So think of it like you hear stories of people that have dealt with frostbite or extreme hypothermia on their appendages when they start to warm up, how they just feel like they're on fire. Yep. It's, That's, it's that times a thousand, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I'm still early on in my Raynaud's and I am on a medication that's typically used for blood pressure to help with it and I don't miss my doses. Uh, occasionally I get a small flare up throughout the day depending on you know what I've eaten, what I've drank and the environmental, it, it happens but it's not severe as if I was off these medications it is very severe and it's very painful. It was to the point of the house was 80 to 90 degrees on the regular. Yep. The dog is sitting there melting. The, my cat is melting. And I'm sitting there going, okay, this is really dry. I need an ice pack. I was literally living with an ice pack just to try to help keep her comfortable and out of pain. While we were going through trials of different medications and we finally found one that works right now. That may change in the future. It However, may. we're gonna roll with it until it stops working. Yep. Um, a lot of people will get ulcers or sores on their fingers or knuckles. It's very common on knuckles too and it's pretty painful to where they can't really bend their fingers because it's right on the tip. Um, these can take months, even years to heal. I've, I'm part of a scleroderma group for my chapter here in Oregon and I see pictures quite frequently of women and a few men. It's very rare but there's a few men out there that have it too. Um, and you'll see the pictures of the ulcers and it's pretty painful and um, we get calcium deposits that come with those most of the time and our body is trying to push it out but because we heal so slow it takes a long time for our body to push out the cal calcium deposits and help heal from the ulcers. And there are many people that have had to have you know fingers, toes amputated because yep. of the severity and the lasting damage that it's caused too much pain and too much trauma that it never heals right. So we tend to, as soon as I start getting cold fingers or cold toes, we work our way as fast as we can to get them warmed up because the longer that they stay cold and the longer that this issue happens, the more damage gets created in our nerves and you want to prevent as much nerve damage as possible. So another thing that can happen is there's small red spots, almost kind of like when you were younger if you ever had chicken pox but they only isolate around your face and your chest yeah they don't swell up like chicken pox does and they're not itchy like you don't even notice they're there until you go look in the mirror and it's like oh hey what the hell i actually have a few red spots here on my shoulder um maybe throughout the summer you might see it you might not usually my strap of my tank top is in the way of it i have a few here and i have um actually a few back here in my hairline um yeah, so basically it's kind of like you took a red sharpie and just went Just put dots all over the place and it's nothing harmful. It's not gonna hurt you. It just it's an annoyance because you see this red mark in your skin and you're like, where did that come from? The other thing is you can get puffy or swollen pain and painful fingers and toes. So those of you that have scleroderma that haven't had this happen yet, keep an eye out for it. Yep. If you're married, engaged or committed to a partner, whatever the situation may be, if you're wearing a ring, you may need to consider getting an oversized ring or the taking the ones. ring off. Yeah, the silicone ones are pretty good because they'll stretch. Yeah. And they're easy to get off. If, you, if your fingers swell too much and it starts to constrict, you can still roll a silicone one off. Yep. If you don't want to do the silicone for whatever reason, you still want to have that wedding band, that engagement band, or that commitment band. I suggest buying at least two sizes bigger than what you normally are. And if it does start to even get too tight with that, 
consider putting it on a necklace. You yep. know, something to where it's still close to your heart and you still have the meaning with you. Yeah. Um, I went, what, six or nine months without wearing any of my rings that I've got. And this is my high school ring. These are my wedding bands. And I went a while without being able to wear those. Nine months and 18 days. Yeah. Uh, they got so swollen. I did have my Raynaud's flare at the same time and it was really awkward and weird because when your Raynaud's flare up, your fingers shrink. Well, they didn't shrink. They kept swelling. Um, what uh, up next? Painful and swollen joints. Um, normal people that have this disease, they can take NSAIDs like um, ibuprofen. ibuprofen. Uh, stuff like that to reduce the swelling in your body but because I was on NSAIDs for too long my liver cannot take it in I, I can't take it anymore uh, excuse us sorry um, so because of that and I have a lib liver enzyme that's too high so I can no longer take NSAIDs so when my joints get painful and swollen I live off of ice packs heating packs um, and if my flare is too bad, my rheumatologist will prescribe me a prednisone to take in short stents. I refuse to take it in long stents, and my rheumatologist knows this and understands the reasons why. So we do at least one to two weeks. Two weeks is about max that I will take. The other thing that this one's a little bit of a trickier symptom to nail down on whether it's because of work, life, stresses at home. Or, Exercising. Yeah. It's muscle fatigue or weakness. So, and by weakness, we're not talking like mental. We're talking no. physical where... You feel like you can't do a lot because you're just so weak. Where on a good day, normally, you can lift 30 pounds all day, no problem. Yeah. The next day, if you're having a flare-up and you've got fatigue and weakness from it, you'd be lucky to lift 10 pounds. Yep, petting your dog. Carrying, carrying a cup like this can seem like it's a hundred pounds in your hand because you're so weak and it, it happens and it's not something that you want to sit there and be like yeah I'm, I'm kind of weak today especially if you've got an ego and a lot of us especially those of us that have a lot of pride in ourselves and what we do and taking care of ourselves the fatigue we'll try to brush it off as all well. I just I worked really hard the day before so I'm tired but this fatigue it never goes away. It's a continuous fatigue. So it's like... You do have days that are worse. You've been out working for three weeks straight, busting your hump, and it just slowly gets worse and worse and worse. And you might have a good day in it, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. And it's an ongoing effect that... It affects you a lot mentally, too, because you feel it. You just always feel tired, always feel drained. Yeah, most commonly... When we have these symptoms that happen, we tend to... How am I going to put this? We tend to get a lot of depression with it, and so and a lot of people, when they get depression, they tend to not clean their house or do their work and their job as well as they can. Uh, he And we'll talk more about stuff like this in our next video, but he will let you know from his point of view what it's like to be a spouse of some... Allergies suck and I'm trying not to <laughs> sneeze on camera. You will learn, we will tell you a little bit more about what it's like to be a spouse with somebody that's got scleroderma and how much this plays on them when I take weeks on end where I just, I can't clean, I can't do it. Where it takes everything for her just to even get up and out of the bed to take care of her service dog. Yeah, and it's really hard because I, I'm one of these people, I love to take care of my animals. Like, they're spoiled. Like, very, very spoiled. <laughs> So a lot of these symptoms can range anywhere from hardly noticeable, very mild, to even potentially life-threatening. Right now I'm at a one level up higher from very mild, so my symptoms are not extreme yet. So I'm early on medications and through therapies. With that we're hoping that we can keep it there yeah. or potentially get it to a state of remission ourselves. That's, that's, that's what the we're goal. working on. We're working on remission. A big thing, early prognosis of this, early diagnosis from a rheumatologist through the tests can make a world of difference because you can adapt to it easier and you can prevent lasting damage a lot sooner. So it'll take a lot longer before any damage really builds up if you get on the right combination of medications and help. But like I said, it all comes down to early diagnosis. Yep. Um, when you feel tired, you, 
not necessarily the fatigue where it's so hard, but you're just... You feel like you should take a nap? Yeah, when you want to just, well, I don't know, I don't really have the energy. I just want to lay down and take a nap, snooze out for 20 minutes, an hour or so. Get up. Don't sit down. Yep. Start, you know, go for a walk. Um, take your dog for a walk. Go get yeah. the mail. Believe it or not, with the pain, stiffness, and achiness that they're common with scleroderma, it helps to alleviate those symptoms so that they're not as severe. Yeah. There's, there's going to be pain, stiffness, achiness. A lot of us with scleroderma are very used to and familiar with pain and the Renaud syndrome, finger ulcerations. I don't have those, thankfully, and I'm very proud and happy that I don't have the, the ulcers and sores in my fingers. I do get some spots every now and then that are a little bit hard and a little uncomfortable, but about a couple of weeks later it goes away. So that's could be, we don't know for sure, but that could be an early stage before the ulcerations start to rupture and become a major problem. Yeah. So So we're keeping an eye on it and we're trying to minimize exposure risks. Yeah. Um, some of the other things is there's a lot, a lot more people out there that they go through worse pain. They, they deal with more joint, nerve, and muscle pain that she hasn't even hit yet because nope. we've caught it pretty early on and we've been trying to stay on top of it to the best of our ability. And I've been suffering and sick and done with a lot of pain for the last 10 years of my life. But it's now coming to the point where I'm starting to be able to enjoy my life and I'm taking advantage of that every step of the way. If I'm having a non-painful day, I'm outside or I'm doing stuff or we're exploring because I love to travel. Usually the next day she's pretty wiped out. Oh, but... I'm, I'm wiped out the next day. Uh, today I'm wiped out because we went up and went to the coast yesterday, so... And that's, those of you on the East Coast, we're not talking about the Atlantic. We're over here on the West Coast. <laughs> we're on the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next video that we're going to be doing, it's not so much of an informative as far as symptoms, problems. It's from the, the perspective of a spouse. It'll be from his perspective. So, it'll probably be a slightly different format where she's asking the question and I'm answering it. Kind of like an interview. It is a tough one. There's, There's a few some tough points questions. that looking over some of the questions she already wrote down that I'm like, uh, how the, how am I going to put this in words? And it's not easy. It's not. That one might actually be a little bit longer than this one. Yeah. So, again, just like our last video, thanks for watching this one. We're trying to make this a very informative video for everybody. Yep. So, like we said earlier, any questions write them down below yep. we will respond to them even if we don't respond to them in the comments we will address them in a video we'll giving write you the them answers. down and that way we can make another video about it and if it's something we don't know the answer to we will find out yeah we will we'll look it up we've got some resources that we can tap into and be like hey so what about this we want you guys to have all the information you can about this disease about how to go about with treatments diagnosis how to live day to day with it um, that's what I want to bring to my vlogs is I'm a patient with scleroderma and a bunch of other medical problems and I live my life. Sorry, allergies are starting to kick my butt because we're sitting outside to film this. Yeah. Um, if you can, please share my videos with everybody. Get it out there. Let's get this information and this education out there for other people. And if you would please, please smash that subscribe button down below. It would really help me if you smash that and click that little notification bell. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. And don't forget the like button. Yeah, the, that little like button, I like get, getting a thumbs up. That yeah. kind of makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see you guys on the next one. See you later, guys. Later. Later.